Domine Dominus Noster, Quamalmi Domine Est Nome Dumin Universa Terra. Gloria Patri et Bidio, et Spiritu Santo, Sicur erat in principio et nunc et semper, et in secula seculorum. Amen. In nomine Iesu, omne genu, frectatur, celesti unterestri. Et inferno norum, et omnes lingua confitea tuur, via Dominus Iesus Christus, in gloria est Dei Patri. Justus ut pama florebit, sicuceturus divani. soldier, Ignatius. He was wounded and it was the occasion of a forced rest. The only books available were those on the life of Christ and on the life of certain saints. And he found interior reactions and he compared the effects of these reactions to the reactions perceived upon reading those of profane heroes, other military leaders, famous men. And he perceived that there was a profound difference. The way in which the trained Jesuit retreat giver will let the spirit work and pick up and detect the promptings and movings of the spirit in the depths of the soul is a whole art and it is a means of discerning the will of God in the specific sphere of vocation. One sometimes wants to know the will of God. The setting aside of the soul for a full month, the famous 30 days, in conditions which separate it from the immediate and place it in a situation of availability to the Blessed Trinity 
is something so radical and so well proven that it cannot be easily dismissed. And hence it is that it is practiced to this day in all its rigor by Jesuits, knowing the fruit that it can still bear. It is not possible for most souls to spend 30 days and to pay a certain amount of money to do that kind of thing, but the principles of its functioning are available to all Christian souls. Essentially, one needs space. One needs to remove all obstacles so that one can see, for a certain prolonged period, things as they are, in their wider and therefore truer context, eternity. There are several classical meditations during the course of the four weeks which have an effect on the soul, notably the ones that pertain directly to eternity, for in doing them the soul is placed before its own destiny, over which when young it still has power of orientation. The Lord has many ways of getting through to a soul. We have seen already how it was this being wounded and this forced rest, which was the favourable time for the Lord to speak to the heart of this young man who would influence the course of history as a result of the acceptance with this grace and its collaboration on the level of what was to come afterwards, for he was generous and much depends on their own generosity. It's not automatic pilot. And so it is that we, too, need to be aware that we have power over time. We have power over other souls if we allow the Lord to empower us and if we make ourselves available. So it is important to discern the will of God with regard to how we will spend the time he gives us on earth. For he gives us only time on loan and one day we'll recall it. There are ways and means of doing something similar to what Ignatius did. One is precisely to have a forced rest, to force ourselves to rest, and to see what it is that we pick up when we decide this way or that way, or when we think of this or that. For the calling of a soul to a specific place or even a specific way of life can be initially and embryonically picked up by a certain warming on the level of the will and the heart when exposed to a certain presence, a certain feeling of this will be my way. A soul which feels warmed and pacified on a deep level before the Blessed Sacrament and when close to the real presence at Holy Mass itself, may be in a state of availability for eventual vocation to dedicate its life to the service of that presence. The going to a place where grace has been perceived in the past can also be quite important, for places can be places also of vocation, notably in the monastic life where a place is important. One wants to hear that again, one wants to feel that again. It was a good feeling, rather like Peter on Mount Tabor. Lord, it is well that we are here. Let us make three tabernacles. We want to keep the experience. And we know that if we return to it, we will have a homecoming feeling. And so it is that if one has heard a call in a certain place and comes back there regularly and re-feels it, then it could be a sign of vocation. Way back, the novice master in France, it was actually at La Trappe, said, Il faut rester fidèle au premier appel. One must remain faithful to the first call. One has been warmed in a place. What happens, however, if one does that, and down the line, that place changes orientation. That can be quite troubling for the soul, for the soul may well have responded to a specific grace, 
and finds that the specificity is being altered against its will, well then one must fall back on the fact that essentially it is a relationship and a gift to a person, Jesus Christ, who is calling. And he then, as Supreme King, can indicate the way forward. But it has to be a bonding unto him. With regard to the charism that a certain person can inspire, that too can be an invitation. One can feel safe with a person. One can therefore, as the disciples did, be drawn to a magnet. And that too is not without importance, for it is what happened in the Christian centuries. One has but to think of a St. Bernard of Clairvaux, a St. Norbert of Xanthon, of a St. Francis of Assisi, and on would, one would go, including, of course, Ignatius that were feasting on this day. They became the most numerous order in the church, 35,000. This because God does use the charism given to a man or a woman. And we too can be instruments of a call. A child does secretly know things and intuit things, can have power over a child or an adolescent before the world chokes it. Quasi modo geniti, like newborn babes. O 
day of days. Who thought I'd see thee rise behind these hills, these sacred hills that now enshroud the paradise of home. My eyes behold at last the unseen whitened flow of Time enveloping this little corpse, for I am dead and buried. This new state to which I rise is pure as snow, nor warps its slender beauty any untamed fate, for on this day arisen, I now live the day that will repeat itself till days repeat themselves no more. Vast Sito give this newly born what this word Trappist says. Of those who say no other. Here I live where Trappists lived before, now dressed as they who came unheard and unheard went their way. Before the tabernacle, Sunday morning at La Trappe. It is a long, long time since last this sound that sounds so much like heaven in the years did slowly fill the silence all around the altar where I knelt. Once more, two tears of deep, deep happiness are sucked by chords of deepening harmony, re-echoing thine own from neath the resonance. The eternal chords of tune make to vibrate where they are known. Tis but in fasting that we taste our food, and when I heard thy long forgotten voice, my old, old friend, as then off land I stood between two lands, two lives, had I much choice. The language and the song that filled my youth. Reheard, could it but well, where lies the truth?